All right, I think we are about ready to go. I know some people are still joining. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's event, Happy at Home, How to Stay Positive in Isolation. Our presenter today is Dr. Chrissy Whiting Madison, but before I get too deep into her introduction, I would like to cover just a few housekeeping topics. Today's webinar is being recorded um, and the link will be made available after the event is complete. Uh, we welcome you to revisit the presentation yourself, share it with friends, family, family, classmates, colleagues, really just anybody who could benefit from a bit of happiness right now. Uh, throughout today's event, we invite you to share your comments and questions. Please go ahead, take a minute and locate the chat box on your screen. And if you think of a question for Chrissy at any point, just go ahead and type it there. I'll be monitoring the chat for questions and I'll either pose it to Chrissy at the moment or hold it for the discussion portion at the end of the event. Our presenter today is Dr. Chrissy Whiting Madison. Dr. Whiting Madison received her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from St. Vincent College in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, her master's degree in rehabilitation counseling from Langston University, Tulsa, and her doctorate in rehabilitation from the University of Arkansas. Chrissy currently serves as Assistant Professor of Psychology at Rogers State University in Claremore, Oklahoma, and specializes in positive psychology. She also enjoys spending time with her beloved husband, daughter, and six cats. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and hand the floor over to Chrissy. Hi guys, oh my gosh. Um, so if you were keeping up with the chat box, I am completely overwhelmed by the number of new friends that I don't know yet, as well as so many people um, from my regular life that I just love. I'm thrilled to see people representing um, Moscow. Um, people from Russia are joining us today. Um, hi, Anastasia. And, I'll, uh, and I'm not sure if there's any other countries represented. Please let us know because that thrills me to no end. Um, I, I hope that today's message definitely um, finds you guys all holding up at least good in some capacity. I know um, our state, and I know there's many states that are represented here today. I know ours, we're, we're looking at starting to open back up as soon as this Friday. Um, I will try to resist the urge to say whether or not I think that is a positive or negative thing, um, but just, you know, trying to make wise choices and do what's best for you and your family. So today, what I'm gonna talk about though, um, isn't even necessarily completely relevant just to the pandemic that we're all experiencing right now, but you know, honestly, this is stuff that, that's good anytime because many of us struggle with you know, being at home too much or, or sitting and, and letting our thoughts go down um, a spirally rabbit hole to depression. Um, I know I'm, I'm personally really bad about it. I, you know, if I'm out and about, I'm the happiest, bubbliest, perkiest person you'll probably ever meet in your lifetime. Um, but then when I'm stuck at home, before you know it, I'm reflecting back and thinking about this time when I was five and I fell off my chair in kindergarten and everybody laughed at me. And before you know it, I need Prozac and a whole lot of therapy. So we all know that being alone can be a little bit dangerous. So um, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about what we can do not only now, but anytime you're struggling. So I'm gonna see if I can get rid of this little screen. I'm gonna minimize that. There we go, goody. Now we, I can actually look at my own PowerPoint. Um, so why are we even here? Um, you know, why did my really good friend, shout out to the RSU library ladies, thank you so much for coordinating this. You know, what are, what are we afraid of? What is so dangerous regarding the pandemic? Well, of course there's the health issue, right? So many people we love fall into a vulnerable category. And even we've, you know, we've lost people that aren't even necessarily considered part of the, the vulnerable category. But beyond that, as someone who teaches psychology, I think it's really important to also look at the mental health behind what's happening in our world right now. Um, we all know that when we have time left to our devices, so to speak, that we can tend to go to dark places. Um, and what is that currently leading to? You know, I gave you guys a few stats that are right now on the screen, and you can feel free to fact check me. I always say where I get my things from. Uh, the first thing we're talking about is that domestic violence is on the rise. And some of the reasons it's speculated is due to the actual isolation and then also financial stress. Uh, you know, interestingly, I actually was chatting with a student of mine's mom the other day, and she works for 911 dispatch in Claremore, Oklahoma, Rogers County, which is where RSU is for those of you that are not nearby. And she says that like nearly every call she gets has something to do with domestic violence since the pandemic happened. You know, we can love our spouses, our families to pieces, 
But we also know we can have too much of a good thing and that people can start to drive us a little crazy. And we are definitely seeing that in America as well as in other nations right now. Isolation also amplifies feelings of suicide. I know I got that one from the USA Today. And again, um, I have friends that serve as counselors and they're doing a lot of the distance counseling these days. And why I bring that up is because they are seeing an abundance of people that are contemplating suicide. You know, maybe they lost their job. Maybe they're just left alone in their thoughts too much. But either way, those numbers are going up. And the last thing I want to talk about is that health officials are concerned that the pandemic will lead to a spike in substance abuse as people try to drink their worries away. And guys, all you need to do is get on Instagram or Facebook and you see the memes and the jokes about people that are day drinking right now. And yes, it's cute. And when not abused, it's, it can be funny. But at the same time, we're talking about um, a real concern here. If people are suddenly drinking all day and they never drank before and they have certain predispositions, this is something that we could really begin to worry about. And just some stuff I wanted to call attention to. Um, some of my colleagues, if you haven't already participated, I, I hope maybe we can get a link on the RSU Library's website, are actually doing a study on this. I encourage you to get involved in with the mental health aspect of this crisis because it is a really big issue. And what we really need to discuss is how we can really take care of ourselves to make ourselves strong enough to make it through to the other side of this crisis. So the next thing I want to talk about is the fact that it's okay to be sad. Um, I was talking to Caitlin, who introduced me um, just earlier this week, and, and I was telling her that there's a lot of things I'm sad about, and it's gotten to me. Um, if you know me personally, or you've had me as a teacher, you probably know that one of my favorite things in the world is um, doing my motivational speaking engagements. Um, I've traveled all over the United States and I, I talk about motivational things and how to be happier and basically anything to do with positive psychology, it's pretty much fair game for me. And I love it. It is fulfilling, fulfilling, it is wonderful, it empowers me, it charges my batteries, um, it, it refills my cup, so to speak. I always tell people not to pour from an empty cup. And here I am myself, not getting my cup filled back up. Well, then I start feeling bad about that, but then I start to guilt myself because I'm like, oh, but you know, no one I know even got sick. No, of course, no one I know or care about died. Um, so why am I being you know, sad about this? And then before you know it, I've, I've guilted myself because I feel sad about something that's important to me. And then I feel even worse. And I'm gonna encourage you guys, you know, to go ahead and feel those feelings. You know, grieving is natural, no, no matter what it is. And, and whatever you do, try to resist the urge to berate yourself into feeling like you shouldn't feel bad because other people are in a worse situation. Yes, maybe you didn't lose your job. Maybe, maybe you, you, know, you, you didn't know anybody who got sick like me. Maybe a lot of things. But at the same time, you're allowed to feel your feelings and allowed to validate your feelings. So the purpose of today is um, really to get into some ideas to help, some, some personal tools. And just because I can talk and give examples all day long, um, I went ahead and um, cut it down to four. Um, I have more, um, if you follow my blog, I talk about it all the time. Um, but just some things that could, you could really take with you and give yourself your own personal pandemic toolkit for your mental health, if you will. Um, I will also like to say thank you. Um, so many people that are uh, in this Zoom room as we speak have actually contributed to these ideas. And to all of you that have contributed your thoughts or feedbacks to any of my research or surveys during this time, I, I do want to say thank you. You're probably going to see some things that are pretty familiar, like, wait, did I say that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> so thank you. Um, I'm going to break down each of these four things to really explain what they look like and how to practically use them and incorporate them into your own life. And the first one I want to talk about is personal fulfillment. And there's a really great article on psychology today, and you can, you know, feel free to look it up, um, suggests that fulfilling a personal goal leads to better mental health. So if you set a goal for yourself and you accomplish it, you're going to feel better. You're going to be happier. You're going to have more mental strength. This is just a really neat thing for me because I'm, I'm very old school. And um, some of my friends will tease me because I actually have this big old chunky planner. Um, it's called a happy planner. Shout out to Heather Creaky. Thanks for buying it for me. Um, 
but it's, it's great because it actually has every day a little spot to list things that you're going to accomplish that day. You know, and we're talking paper and pen, cross off, check out, highlight. If you're like me, you're going to color code and have some fun with it. Uh, Y'all know who you are. But there is something intrinsically powerful about creating that list every day and then checking it off every day. And now some of us may have been laid off. Some of us might be working from home. For example, I may or may not be wearing PJ pants right now. Um, I'm sure y'all that know me know that I'm totally wearing PJ pants or not because you can't see it. Um, but I'm still trying to accomplish things to get that sense of fulfillment, if you will. And sometimes my goals are really lame. They really are. Like, I mean, the other day was like empty dishwasher was one of them. But it still, on some level, was intrinsically beneficial for me to be able to check that off my list that I did it. And I don't expect you to have a list of 30 things every day because, you know, sometimes we're not feeling it. Sometimes it's three things. Sometimes it's two. And sometimes there are silly little things that might not feel like they have any significance to the world around you. Well, here's the beauty. It's going to have power in your, in your head and in your mind and in your heart and in your soul. So it still works. So personal fulfillment is one of the first things I really want to encourage you to do. And as you're, you know, working from home, feeling a little bit lost, uncertain about what's next, I'm going to encourage you just, you know, even put a note in your phone. If you're not a paper and pen person, put a little note in your phone and put down a few things every day that you're going to accomplish and check them. You can, you know, in the, in the notes app, there's add check boxes. It's a feature. So you can actually, you know, just click the little button and watch yourself accomplish things. Um, I, I, you know, there's the value of 20 days of doing anything to actually see a benefit. I'm going to encourage you guys to do this for the next 20 days and see what for personal fulfillment personal fulfillment can do for you. The next thing I want to talk about is journaling. Um, and for those of you that have heard my journaling spiel, I apologize, you're going to hear it again. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is journaling the right way. Um, there are definitely right and wrong ways to journal. And I unfortunately do not believe everybody completely covers that when they recommend journaling. Um, and my, I have this great example. I was at a conference in Cincinnati last year. Um, great time. Shout out to my KRA friends, if any of you are with us. Um, and I, it's, it's funny, I should disclaimer. Um, anytime I go on a flight anywhere, it's, I'm pretty sure there's like an invisible tattoo on my forehead that says, tell me your problems. Because no matter who I sit with, they always wind up spilling their guts to me, telling me their issues. And, and I mean, I've tried, I have put on like the headphones. I have like got out the book. I've thought about investing in some of those bad book covers. Um, look it up. They're really funny. Um, just to kind of maybe get a break, maybe even take a nap on a plane. But regardless, I, it, it seems that someone always wants to tell me their problems on every plane ride I'm on. So um, while coming back from Cincinnati, I had a layover in Charlotte and was flying from Charlotte to Tulsa. And I sat next to an older woman and um, being that I'd had a little bit too much fun with my new KRA friends the night before, I really wanted to nap, really did, did, did really did, did not really want to help anybody. And, um, and I, you know, laid my head back and closed my eyes. And before I knew it, the lady said, hey, hey, can I talk to you? And, and I'm like, man, how do you know? How do you know you can do that? I, I, I don't know. Anyways, if any of y'all can tell me what I'm doing, please let me know. So of course, me being me um let her talk to me and you know and we started talking and she was an older woman um i would say late 60s early 70s and she was telling me that she recently found out that her husband had been having a series of what i would call emotional affairs where he would be texting women and saying things like i love you i wish i could leave my wife for you i wish we could have a relationship i wish i was married to you instead um, you know, just a gambit of inappropriate conversation with other females when you're in a committed marriage. Um, she had found these texts. Um, he didn't delete them, which unfortunately seems to be the case of how a lot of cheaters are caught. And she confronted him and told him she wanted a divorce. So she was fully prepared to end what was like almost like a 50 year marriage until her children kind of ganged up on her. She has a son and a daughter. To which she told me um, that they said, it's not like dad slept with them. Why would you ruin all of our holidays going forward? If you do this, you'll never see the grandkids again. I mean, they just really opposed her and, and ending this marriage for her. And she was telling me this because she really just didn't know what to do. Um, she was very unhappy in her marriage. 
but felt that actually going through with a divorce would damage not only the relationship with her children, but with her grandchildren as well. And that wasn't something she was willing to do. Uh, she told me that she was seeing a therapist, which I was like, yay, way to go. Um, and that she, that she was journaling and, but nothing really was helping and she was just miserable. So I kind of honed in on the journaling thing. And I said, you know, just out of curiosity, would you, would you be willing to share with me what you're journaling? And she said, well, sure. She said, every night I spent a good solid hour talking about how I would like to kill my husband or do horrible things to certain body parts or, you know, dismember torture in various ways. And basically rants in writing form for an hour about how much she hates him. And as she was saying this, I, I couldn't help but think, well, what are you reinforcing in your mind? You know, are you reinforcing, you know, hate? and anger and some pretty dark thoughts, which, you know, we all have dark thoughts, we're married, we get it, you know, but how is that helping you grow and live with the relationship that you've decided to commit to? So I asked if she was open to some ideas to which, of course, she said yes, because she had, you know, had obviously started the conversation with me. And, and I suggested, I said, hey, um, why don't you tear the pages out of that book, out of that journal and start all over? And instead of spending an hour writing things you would like to do to certain parts of his anatomy, why don't you write down something he did that day to try to make your marriage better? Something that he did that you appreciate. Something that shows you the old person that you were in love with for all these years. And really start focusing on the good things that are happening in your life, especially because you're committed to making this work. And I should say she had told me that her husband was completely committed to making it right and that the anger was all on her side. And um, she seemed to like the idea. And I ended up giving her one of my business cards and she reached out to me about two weeks later and she said, I can't thank you enough. My marriage has never been better. And that was powerful for me because just by tweaking a little bit, how you want to feel versus what you're journaling through um, can be really powerful. And, and I'm not saying don't, you know, work through your feelings in your journal because absolutely, but at some point, make it a tool for your growth, right? So if you're working through this pandemic and, and let's say, you know, you're journaling every day about how scared you are, how sad you are, how scared you are, how sad you are, those are the feelings you're reinforcing. Go ahead and work through those absolutely work through those but then start journaling about what's next when this is over what are you going to do what do you have to look forward how can you grow how can you take this experience and allow it to transform you into a better version of yourself um now you may not be a writer and um not everyone is so your your journaling outlet might look different than a traditional fabric cover journal from the 90s um, Maybe you're a poet, maybe you like art, maybe you like crafts. Um, and that's all things you can work on while maintaining positivity and focusing on how you want this experience to transform you rather than break you. And, and this is one of those times where we actually do have time. Um, over the years, I've had so many people say things along the lines of, well, I, I used to paint and it brought me so much joy, but now I just don't have time. And one of my first you know, reactions is, do you really have time not to? Because it seemed like it was such a good thing for you. Now is the time for those things that brought you joy, bring those back, bring those back into your life and, and use them in a really positive way to help you grow. Reducing negativity. Um, guys, we are inundated, saturated, completely drowning and negative, negativity, negative triggers negativity right now. Um, it's everywhere. You turn on the TV and there's another press conference telling us how many people are dead now. Um, there are people on, on social media, you know, harping their perspectives, uh, reopen everything now. Or if you go out in public or if you go to the grocery store, you're a bad human being because you're making people sick. And it just feels like there's more negativity than ever before. And what's, what's really sad is, you know, research actually suggests that the news and media has always been on the negative side. And now you're kind of hard pressed to find more positivity than ever. 
Um, and I'm just gonna encourage you guys to, to take those out, remove that. If watching the news makes you feel bad, don't watch the news. If you're going to the CDC every day to see what the current numbers are, makes you scared, don't go to the CDC website. You know, if being on social media is, is triggering you to negativity, then guys, don't go on social media. Don't. And, and, and try not to be the negative trigger for somebody else. I, I had somebody make me feel so bad because I went on a walk and posted a picture. And, and they, you know, went on and on. They sent me a, somebody sent me a private message and said, you have so many role models. I can't believe you'd post that. Now they think it's okay to go outside. It is okay to go outside. It is okay to go for a walk. I mean, with appropriate social distancing. But that's not a bad thing to go get some sunshine. So don't be the negative trigger. Don't, don't break other people down because you're scared and you feel bad. When at all possible, transform the negatives into positives. And for those of you that have been following my weight loss journey, I am really proud to say I have not gained the quarantine 15. I've actually kept losing and I am a pound and a half away from my goal, which is pretty phenomenal. So for me, um, one of the negatives I've turned into positives is I can't do a lot of the things that I normally do for self-care. Um, I love to go shopping. I, you know, there is no going to the mall and trying on skinny clothes for me. Um, I like going to amusement parks. Uh, Frontier City is closed. We haven't even gotten our season tickets this year. I like getting pedicures. Guess what? Nails, nails floss, they're all closed until Friday. Little clap, sorry. Um, but for me, I've actually tried to transform those negatives into positives for me. Well, this is what I can still control. I can still control my weight loss. So I'm going to get out and I'm going to walk. Um, I have my husband currently fixing a tire on my bike so I can start bicycling. So while I not be, may not be able to walk around the mall or walk around an amusement park, which is stuff I would ordinarily choose to do, I can make other choices that transform those negatives into positives. Enhancing your human connection. Um, there's some great, great, great um, initiatives, if you will, going around right now. I know Cox has uh, one call a day to call and connect with one human being every day for good mental health. Um, that, that is so crucial and so important. Um, one of my all-time favorite researchers, who's really not a researcher, uh, is Sebastian Junger. Uh, you may know his name. He actually wrote and directed The Perfect Storm, so he's more of a Hollywood mogul, and he's also former military. Um, this, this gentleman is really interested in um, PTSD and human connection. And one of the things he writes about a lot is his belief that PTSD is more about losing the human connections that you have while actively engaged in military service more than the actual trauma itself. And when he talks about like when you're over there, your relationships are so deep that you know that tomorrow you might die for your friends and it's okay. And in our life here as civilians, we, we don't have those deep of relationships. It doesn't cross our mind that we may give a life for someone at some point because the likelihood of it here in normal america is 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 very slim we're not going to give our life to someone it's very very rare um so just the, the value of those deep meaningful spiritual relationships are not lost on him and they're really not lost in the world today and I mean, for you guys, I, I mean, for me, it, it hurts my heart to not be teaching and to not be in my office with my work friends. Um, I miss everybody so much. I miss being able to yell across the hallway when I want to talk. Um, I miss seeing my students. I, I miss having them pop in my office to, to talk about boy problems. I, I miss all of it. And for me, that, that's very debilitating because those human connections are so important to me. Um, for me, for this, I, I just really encourage you guys, I always say go a step farther. Let's say you're on Instagram and you see a picture that you like of a friend and you're gonna hit the little heart, right? Well, instead of hitting the heart, leave a comment. Just go a step farther than you're thinking. If you were gonna leave a comment, maybe you should send them a message. If you were gonna send them a message, maybe you should text them. If you were going to text them, maybe you should call them. If you were going to call them, maybe you should make plans for them 
And maybe by doing that, and if we all just went a step further than what we originally planned on doing, what beautiful connections we could build in the world. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the thing I miss the most right now is, is seeing my friends and playing silly card games and laughing until my stomach hurts over ridiculousness that none of you all would understand. Um, but I, I just can't express enough how important it is to continue to nurture those relationships in the pandemic stage that we're in. And my challenge really is for this is to not only go a step further, but, but reconnect with someone. Um, is there a classmate that you had that you love talking to? You know, uh, we have these great features. You can actually, you know, look them up on my RSU and, and send them an email and say, hey, just wondering how you're doing. I really miss sitting by you in class. Um, is there someone you went to school with, someone you went to grade school, high school, college, grad school, doctoral school with, someone that you can reconnect with and reestablish a, a human connection and enhance it and allow it to bring beauty to your life? and allow it to transform you as a person and make you a better person and a better version of yourself. So um, I just wanted to share some ideas that you guys gave me. Um, this is uh, based on research that I've done with y'all about some things that you're doing to cope. And um, I share these in hopes that you'll see one and go, oh, I should try that, right? So maybe a night nice idea. Um, a lot of you guys that, talk, that I talked to, and I think there was probably about 100 people that I talked to, um, decided that this was a great opportunity to learn a new skill. Um, I think I've heard everything from crocheting to cooking. Um, I, I really, I want to tell you guys, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to learn something new during this quarantine. I, I have not learned anything new. Um, however, I'm really impressed to see y'all place um, your new projects on social media. I see uh, my friend Cassie does crocheting. She takes pictures of her beautiful crochet pieces. Um, I see my friends that are cooking and taking pictures of what they made, and I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look like hamburger helper, and that's my skill set, but yeah, you. Um, my second one is playing with pets or adopting a new one. Uh, I actually know many people who decided that this was the perfect time to adopt a new pet. Uh, you're going to be home with them, right? You have time to train on them, love them appropriately so that they become a good pet. Um, as you heard in my intro, I personally have six cats, and it honestly has been wonderful to actually get to spend time with my cats, and I honestly don't think that they are uh, furrily flipping me off in the corner because they want me to leave. I actually think they're enjoying it. They, they've been sitting on my lap more. Uh, the baby, the kittens have been playing more. And it's, it's brought me a lot of joy that, honestly, I don't usually have a ton of time for them. And that's sad for them and sad for me. So that's been a beautiful thing for me. Um, prayer, meditation, and mindfulness. Um, a lot of people talked about uh, using this time to read their Bible more or to meditate more or to learn to meditate. Uh, if you've never tried meditation or you say, I tried and it didn't work, keep trying because eventually it does work and it's very healing. Uh, also mindfulness, I could probably talk for an hour just on mindfulness, so I will resist the urge to get on my mindful soapbox, but just being really, um, using this as a time to become very aware of what you do and why will help you grow as a person. Uh, FaceTime, Zoom, and phone calls. Uh, if you were logged on early, um, I got to see my niece and my brother-in-law, and that was so exciting because they live in Pennsylvania. Uh, hi, guys. <laughs> and um, this is, you know, it's so great to have that opportunity to see your family and friends, and we have the technology to do it. So it's freaking fantastic. Take advantage of that. Uh, also, keep your routine. Ladies, put your bra on like you're going out. I know. I know. It's basically swearing. But, but really do it, um, get yourself dressed as I have my Friday the 13th PJ pants on underneath my cute top that I did put on for today. Um, keeping your routine will definitely help you to keep better mental health. Um, also remember to keep your self-talk positive. We're our own worst enemies. Um, I'm terrible about cutting myself down in my head. Uh, honestly, we say things to ourselves that we would never in a billion years dream of saying, oh, sorry, cat. Uh, to one of our friends or one of our loved ones. And when you find yourself going down your rabbit hole, I always tell people, and I will try not to get emotional because like, this makes me cry all the time. Um, ask yourself this, is this how my best friends see me? Is this how my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, my spouse, is this how they see me? And then say out loud how they see you. Uh, it's really powerful and I, um, it's really powerful. You know, um, when I start feeling bad about myself, I 
I will generally pull someone that I'm really close to and say, you know, well, how do my sisters describe me? Um, my sisters, you know, they describe me as amazing and I try so hard to help people and I have a really good heart. And um, see, this is where I started to get all teary. <laughs> um, but that's who I know I really am deep in my heart. And if I'm sitting in the mirror going, oh yeah, you lost weight, but you're still fat. Like that's really not who I really am. And it's important to not lose sight of that when we're going through this. Um, uh, questions from you, I, I hope we have more. Um, I did get one pre-question um, going into this and I, I hope you're here. Um, I, it, was, it was submitted to me anonymously, so um, I don't know, but this is one question that was submitted to me. And then at that point, I'm gonna help with more questions from you guys. Um, so the question was, what are some good practices or exercises to not be envious or become bitter with your significant other? They are sheltered in place while you continue to work 50 to 60 hours a week. Did I mention they continue to get paid for not working? Grateful, but still green with envy. Uh, thank you for your time. Oh gosh, you know, I mean, I can see that. I absolutely, it's like, oh wait, you're getting paid for doing nothing and I'm over here working off my butt. Um, not right, right? Um, so one of the things that I would definitely um, tell you is um, to just, you know, work on your own mindset. You know, they didn't really necessarily choose that for themselves. And you don't have control over their situation. You do, however, have control over how you feel about it. Um, so one of the things I talk about is intentional gratitude. Um, we all want to be grateful for what we have. You know, I mean, you do have a job. Uh, if you're working 50 to 60 hours a week, you're probably making bank, um, probably exhausted, but still, you know, helping a lot of people if you're considered an essential employee. Um, so really think about the good. Um, and how do you intentionally think about the good? How do you intentionally practice gratitude? Um, one of my favorite things to do is um, I have in the notes app in my phone and every night, right before I go to sleep, I write down or, or type in three things that happened that day that were good, that made me smile, that made me laugh, three things that were good. And, and I'm gonna be honest, some days are hard. Some days it's like, yep, I breathed, yay. Um, other days, there's more than three. It was a great day, right? And I write down those three, and that is the last thing I do with my phone before I go to sleep. I've already set my alarm. I don't get back on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat. I set the phone down and I go to sleep. When my alarm goes off the next morning, before I check my Instagram, my Snapchat, or my Facebook, I reread those three things. And what that does for me is it, it really sets a tone to have a positive day, to start on a positive note, a smiling note, a laughing note, um, something warm and fuzzy rather than, oh, it's 6 a.m. I don't want to get up, right? Or, oh, I have to go to work and he doesn't have to and this sucks with his PJ pants, right? With intentional gratitude, it, it really will help shift your mindset um, away from your bitterness. But I'm going to be honest, we're all jealous sometimes and it's okay to feel those feelings. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about in regards to this is thought stopping. When you feel yourself getting really bitter or angry, just stop yourself. Um, and I get that that's really hard. But if you stop yourself and replace it with something positive, after you've done that for so long, and it does take time and it is not easy at first, but as it becomes a common part of your existence, it's a lot easier to put the happy things in your mind. Guys, honestly, it's how I stay so bubbly um, than you think. And when all else fails, communicate. It's okay if you say to your husband, hey, um, you kind of suck. I just need to tell you that. Um, and, and eventually, you know, talking about it will probably lead to a little bit of laughter. And regardless of that, communication will always strengthen your relationship over bitterness. So um, I just have some of my personal information up here. Um, I do have a book. Um, this is always my chance. I'm, I'm giving away a copy today. I'm assuming Caitlin's going to pick that today. Um, but if you want more of this, more tips on how to be happier, more tips, and you're listening to me talk right now and you're like, wow, she is really bubbly. Okay, I wasn't always this bubbly and it's all about how I did it. It's all self-case study. Um, if you would like a copy, um, they're only $10. If you need it shipped, I'd be happy to work out whatever shipping rate you want. It depends on how quickly you want it, honestly. Um, you can shoot me an email, cwhiting at rsu.edu. Um, and I'd be happy to even um, toss you one from six feet away and I hear me first, I can actually meet you somewhere. Um, so I would be happy to meet. Um, I live in Sperry, Oklahoma. So Claremore to Bartlesville to anywhere, I'm happy to meet. 
Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook, Dr. Chrissy Whiting Madison author. And I have a blog that offers every Thursday more tips to being happy, um, absolutely free of charge. Um, so feel free to follow me. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it back over, and over to your friend of mine, Caitlin, for any questions that you guys have um, and any more information that she has to share as well. I just wanted to say thank you so much, Chrissy. Um, while people are getting their questions typed up, thank you so much for agreeing to conduct this event for us all today. Um, and to those of you still in attendance here, once questions have wrapped up, um, I have posted a link to a little, when we do in-person events, we always have a post-event survey. Um, so we decided to bring the survey to you guys digitally this time. So there is a link in the chat for a little bit of a post-event survey feedback. Um, the feedback we get on these surveys help guide the library here in the sorts of events that we continue to host in the future. Um, and it looks like we are getting a question in the chat, Chrissy. Amanda asks, do you have any tips for managing the stress of household chores with everyone home and making messes all day, every day? Seven people, two cats, one dog, and a house that is never clean. Help, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, okay, first of all, screw it, just let me mess. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, I, now I can't imagine how overwhelmed you feel. Um, I have one husband, one kid, and six cats, and I feel overwhelmed. Um, you know, my best advice always for housework is, is and chores and just maintaining the sanity and this thing is, is to make things as fun as possible. Um, you know, and I mean, it's, it's not always great to make things a game, but you totally can. Um, you just got to make things bring as much joy as possible. You need um, a good playlist for your music will always help with really good, positive, energetic music um, is always a great pick me up for me um, and getting your kids involved and having chores become fun for them instead of so chorish uh, is also really beneficial. I mean, I'm, I am very, very fortunate to have a child who is always willing to help me out. And I, I know how lucky I am and we keep things relatively sane, but perhaps the most important thing is to give yourself a little bit of grace. This isn't going to be forever. And if your house isn't immaculate, um, you know, guys, I have one wall right now showing because y'all don't even need to see anything else. You know, after this is all over, there'll be plenty of time to get your house in better shape. And if your house isn't perfect, your life isn't perfect, if your homeschooling isn't perfect, if you need to do a shot of tequila to teach your children, give yourself a little grace and forgiveness because this is a very irrational, unnatural time. And, and it, but it won't last forever. Eventually those kids will go back to school where you'll have time to clean, to do things the way you want to again, and, and maybe just a little bit of forgiveness is in, in order. Um, one thing I do wanna add though, is also to be careful. Um, there is a lot of scientific evidence that suggests a really big link between messiness and clutter and anxiety. So if you do see that it's starting to bother you on a mental health level, that is really a good time to be communicating with your spouse and with your children that are older to say, hey, look, this is really bothering me. I, I need help to make this better for me. Um, you know, communication is always the key. Pull people in and do what you need to do to make things happier and healthier for you. Um, Eddie asks if the recording will be made available. Yes, absolutely. As soon as the event ends and the recording finalizes, we will get that link sent out to everybody who registered. Um, and then Jana asks, with being on lockdown, do you have ideas on how to get some time alone from the rest of the household? I think time alone is completely imperative and that you need to find a way to do it. Um, my personal favorite is a bath bomb, the bathtub and locking the door. And I will bring them in one of my favorite cats just because I love them. Um, but I, I mean, you definitely need to find a way. And the younger your children are, I'm going to be, I actually said that just the other day. I have so much sympathy for uh, people with young kids because I think you guys must be dying a little right now. Um, I mean, my daughter's 12, so she, you know, if I need some time alone, I'm like, I'll go watch Netflix, I need some time. And it's, it's not a big deal. Um, I absolutely think you need it, whether it's, you know, taking a walk by yourself, um, taking a bubble bath. I'm, I am a big believer on sunshine, being a very, very good happiness motivator. Um, I mean, gosh, even just locking yourself up with a book, um, there's a great app you can put on your phone called Libby. It, it ties in like all the libraries in your area so you can read books endlessly. It also has audio books um, that are a great opportunity for free. Um, 
If you do have small children, uh, may I recommend the following trick? Um, tell your children that you're gonna take a nap and whenever they come and wake you up, it's time for everybody to clean or do chores, they will leave you alone longer. Um, let's see. Anastasia says, I'm struggling with being single. I've always been and can't throw the most recent affair out of my mind. I know I would have let it go easier if I were not locked down. Oh gosh, because the too much time to think thing is, is totally dangerous. Um, and you know, um, getting over heartbreak is, is hard for everyone. And you know, as, as happy and bubbly as I am, I'm not going to play pretend that I never had my share of heartbreak. Um, definitely had, I think, more than my fair share as most of you probably feel the same way. Um, may I encourage you to, you know, just develop some really good, meaningful friendships and relationships in your life to try to fill the void and try to communicate with people as much as you can. I think um, a lot of that problem in isolation and in lockdown is, is having too much time to think about what went wrong, what you possibly did wrong, what they did wrong, what you could have done differently, what you want to do differently and don't have the opportunity to do. So, you know, I'm gonna encourage you, you know, I mean, I mean Anastasia, friend me on Facebook. I will chat with you anytime you want. Um, you know, get on social media, join some groups on social media that have similar interests to you and start developing some great friendships. And that being said, you never know what might, might come out of it. Maybe, you know, um, the best way to get over someone is to find someone new. Uh, Ashley also has a great question. Ashley asks, any tips on encouraging my 16-year-old son to do his schoolwork when he already hates school? Um, above shameless bribery, <laughs> I, you know, I definitely think the reward system has, has worked out really well in my home. Um, and I, you know, I, 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 I'm sure it looks like bribery to the outside world, but um, you know, just creating a system. And you may need to chunk it uh, more than you perhaps thought just to really get the motivation rolling. Um, you're not, first of all, you're not alone. And I, I need to tell you that because I think everybody is struggling with their, getting their kids to focus. Um, my daughter did great the first week and now this week she's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I hate life. And um, so, you know, first we did the first week, I said, hey, you know, tell you what, if we finish everything this week and you get above a 75% on everything, I'll let you buy something on Amazon. And, and she did and we did. Um, but this second weekend, I'm finding it to be even more challenging. So I've been thinking to myself, well, how can we break this down to help, um, you know, enable her motivation? So, you know, um, well, let's see, maybe if you do one hour of work here, you can have this reward or we can do this fun thing uh, versus you have to do it all or nothing. Um, I think one of the worst things, at least in Oklahoma, is the slip up of, hey, your grades don't matter, your grades can't go down because now none of the students are worried about their grades, right? So what is the motivation to continue? And I'm, I'm afraid also in Oklahoma, a lot of parents are not caring if their kids finish or not. Um, my daughter has a Zoom meeting and like two kids show up to it, it's horrible. Um, that being said, I would really just try to see what really works. Um, what, what motivates your son or daughter to do anything? Um, and then use that as your tool. And you may need to really chunk it up slowly. Like, okay, look, work on this for 15 minutes. Do this assignment. You know, maybe instead of the daunting, if you do this for the rest of the semester, you get this prize. But maybe instead making it into little manageable chunks, you might have a little more success. Mariah asks, how do you suggest college students stay on track and positive about not seeing friends and trying to get their schedule ready for summer and fall? I will tell you, this is miserable for everyone. Um, I think most of us prefer to be in the environment with our friends, with our teachers. Um, I love my students. Uh, Mariah is one of them and I love you. Um, that, that being said, uh, it, it's really hard to stay motivated. And I definitely have, you know, a share of my students um, who aren't staying motivated. And I would really look at it a lot like what we're talking about in regards to keeping your students motivated as you're homeschooling. Um, it, it's to really, you know, make it as, as, as chunked as you need to. Give yourself grace. It's okay if you missed an assignment, right? It's not going to be a deal breaker at the end of the day if you miss one assignment. So allow yourself some forgiveness. Think about what really motivates you to succeed. 
you know, if going to graduate school to become a therapist or to become, you know, just my field, or, um, you know, getting into medical school or getting into nursing school, if that's what's motivating you, you really need to keep that in your forebrain. Um, you know, one of my favorite mentors, uh, Dr. Lynn Cook at the University of Arkansas, always said, keep your eye on the prize, right? Um, if you don't chunk up doing five minutes of work right now, then you're not going to be going to grad school. You're not going to get that doctorate. It's, you're not going to write a dissertation. You're not going to get to that point. So break it up as much as you need to. Give yourself some grace and figure out what motivates you to continue. That being said, guys, we have awesome technology. Um, I am thrilled with getting to see so many of my favorite faces today, right now. You know, don't be afraid to set up things with your classmates and take that initiative be like, hey guys, um, why don't we work on this together? We could, you know, set up a Zoom meeting or we could, you know, all get on Skype or we could, you know, FaceTime or anything. You know, don't, don't be afraid to reach out and enhance those connections to bring them back as part of your life. Yes, it's not the same, but at least we can get a little closer. Uh, looks like the next question is from Lacey. Um, Lacey says, my husband and I have caught our eight-year-old in multiple lies and sneaking things since this quarantine has began. We are almost out of ideas to help her understand why it is not okay. Any suggestions would be helpful. I'm trying not to lose my patience and sanity with her. Thank you. And again, we talk about these small children in quarantine thing. Lacey, I, oh, my heart breaks for you because I know I have it easier. I, I don't deny that for a second. You know, uh, the thing with parenting is that you could have five kids and all five of them are so completely unique. And, you know, and I, I'll have people say, well, there's no way I wouldn't spank a child. Well, what if your child doesn't respond to spanking? It's futile. What's the point? or I would never ground my child, or I would never take this thing away from my child, or I would never, you know, do this or that, you know, when I become a parent. The truth is, is that something works for every human being. What, you know, motivates my behavior change is going to be completely different than what motivates your behavior change or your children's or your spouse's behavior change. And I know it sounds like you're, you're saying, I've tried everything, I'm at my wit's end. I'm just gonna encourage you to not stop trying. Uh, there is going to be something that she responds to, to, to understand it. And, you know, and it may be something you least expect. I'm, I, you know, I learned after a lot of trial and error, and I'm talking a lot of trial and error with my daughter. Uh, the one thing she really responds to is simply me saying I'm disappointed in her, like just crushes her. And that me using those words is more powerful than, um, you know, taking away a phone, her phone or spanking or anything else you can imagine. I just really encourage you to keep seeking out what, 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 is, what is her key? What, what is going to motivate her to want to change and to, to want to keep going? Um, and Lacey, you can feel free to drop me an email and I will throw you a ton more. You can tell me what you've tried privately and we can go back and forth and I will throw you a ton more of suggestions um, until we find that magic ticket. Angela asks, any tips on how to cope with the large amount of little inconveniences that come from COVID? A particular item missing at the store, something around the house breaks and cannot get fixed, etc. I've always been one that gets more irritated by the small things than the big things. You know, it's interesting because I'm, I'm a firm believer in the cumulative effect of the world. And um, usually I will pop over a small thing as well. Um, and everybody will be like, whoa, what the heck? But it's really been a series of the small things. And if one thing COVID is, is a series of small things. Um, what I really recommend, you know, is, is maybe just like a, like a series of checks and balances. You know, we talked about this a little bit um, in regards to, you know, thought stopping or um, transforming a negative into a positive. Um, you know, for example, um, there's no toilet paper. Well, you know, my tissues with aloe are pretty darn soft. This might be a better thing. Um, and you might have to get really creative. And just like anything, probably the first hundred times you do it, you're going to be like, I don't even really feel that way. I'm just saying it because it's stupid. But I will tell you that after you've done it enough times, it really does work. You will begin to see things in a more positive light and find the positivity in a dark situation. Um, about a year ago, um, my dishwasher broke and we were just in a tight place financially and I couldn't, I, I couldn't just go out and buy a new good dishwasher. And I didn't really wanna buy like, you know, a hunk of junk. 
And I was like, hey, yeah, look at me, learning how to hand wash, new skills going on the Vita. And I, and I really tried to be really positive about it. And, um, and you know, after a while it worked and now I have a new dishwasher and I hope I, God, I never have to be that positive about that again. Um, but really just, you know, really acknowledge that the little things are bothering you and try to put a positive spin on them as much as you can. And you will notice after time, the more you do it, the easier it becomes and the less cumulative effect that you really have. Uh, we do have time, I think, for a couple of more questions, if anybody still is typing anything out. Um, but I do want to say, again, thank you all so much uh, for joining us today. And thank you again, Chrissy, for this amazing event. Um, everyone, your participation and input helps guide RSU libraries in planning our future events. So I've posted the survey link again. Please take a moment um, to let us know your thoughts on today's event um, and let us know the kinds of things you want us to see or you want to see us put on in the future. Um, somebody is anonymously asking, can you talk a little more about the green-eyed monster? I'm not an essential worker. Oh, you know, I mean, it, it, jealousy is legit. Um, it, it, it really is. Um, I, I feel like you know, and it, it struck our house um, more so um, in a reverse way. I mean, my husband uh, is an essential worker and he's been working 60 hours a week and he comes home and I'm three o'clock in the afternoon on the laptop in my PJs. And, um, and I, I would really be misspoken if I didn't say it. It's caused us to get a little tense and snippy at each other. Um, had a couple of strong words and, 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 I, and I get it, uh, how it looks. And, and honestly, how I feel, there's part of me that's like, yep, get to work in my PJs. So I'm not really helping because I'm, you know, kind of being a brat about it. You know, that being said, I mean, communication is really everything. Like, you know, for me to say, hey, I am really jealous that you still get to get out every day while I'm stuck here. Um, I haven't said that. And uh, he's actually here. He's listening. Hi, honey. Um, and, but I haven't said, hey, I'm actually really jealous that you're getting to go out and help people while I'm literally doing nothing important other than staying home and not spreading the COVID or the Rona, right? Um, but I think, you know, and even for me, like I, I fail to communicate. Um, but, you know, jealousy in comparison has been something I have, I have battled my whole life. I've actually blogged about it. Uh, there's a whole chapter in my book about it. Um, and just one of the best things you really can do for yourself I just really, really focus on the good. And it is so hard. I, I, I know you guys are also going, yeah, that's so easy, but it's, it's not, it's not. And if, if I make it look easy, I apologize because it's not. Um, just really like focusing on the good things that are happening and communicate, communicate, communicate. Uh, and also watch your tendency to open doors that allow you to be more jealous. Um, you know, for me, um, I'm a little jealous. I actually had to block somebody I like from my Facebook feed because they were going to New York to be on the front lines to help. And I'm um, like, well, I want to go, I want to go help people. I want to, you know, if you know me, like incessant, overwhelming need to save the world, uh, is kind of part of who I am. And so I had a ton of jealousy for that. And I ended up having to block her from my feed, at least for now, because it was bothering me. I was jealous that she was getting to go do this big, amazing thing in my career. So, you know, above, you know, the intentional gratitude that I talked about, um, as well as communicating, you know, really notice what your triggers are in regards to that um, coming out of the infamous green eyed monster. And, and really, you know, even write it down. You know, uh, for me, it always helps to write things down so I know what's going on. But like, if I feel like suddenly super, super jealous or I'm comparing myself to a situation, I will write down what just triggered that. So I can go back and look at, hey, what do I need to avoid so I don't go down that rabbit hole? What do I need to turn off? What do I need to not talk about? What do I need to do to put me in a better place so that I'm not feeling that way? Above all else, I think we all can relate on some level. Give yourself some forgiveness. It, it, it's going to be okay, and it's okay to feel that way. Um, this will probably be the last question we have time for 
during the event today, but if anybody has further questions, uh, feel free to email Chrissy. I'll post her email address in the chat for everybody. But the last question, Avery asks, how do we deal with issues we have coexisting with live-in partners of our parents? Usually I leave to avoid conflict and now I can't. Wow, that is a really tough one when you already have these issues. Um, I mean, it, I, I honestly, I would suggest still leaving. And I mean, that, that sounds terrible, but you know, um, go for a walk, go for a bike ride. Uh, Ooh, did you know she need milk? Maybe it's time for that target run. Um, just, you know, don't go for milk and spend $500 like all us women do. Um, that, that being said, um, I would still try to remove yourself from it as much as possible. Even if that's, you know, going into your own room and downloading a book on your phone and reading for a while something to remove yourself from that toxicity um, in some way or shape or form that's healthy for you. Um, just remember to make yourself the priority and take care of yourself more than you, more than you expose yourself to that. That worries me so much about people being exposed to toxic environments. Try to find a way to free yourself that is healthy and, and a good place for everyone. Thank you so much. Um, and again, um, email Chrissy if you have further questions, cwhiting at rsu.edu. Um, and to keep up to date on future events through the RSU libraries, um, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, just at RSU libraries. Um, thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you all so much. Be happy.